Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over double displacement or double replacement reactions. Double replacement reactions are when there is an exchange of positive ions between two compounds. And so you can see we have two compounds, and that's often the easiest way to identify double displacement or double replacement reaction. We have a compound on the left. So we have two compounds on the left and two compounds on the right. And often this kind of reaction will result in the uh, formation of a solid precipitate, a gas, or water. So here we have the general form. We have one compound, two compounds, one compound, and two compounds. And what usually happens in a double displacement or double replacement reaction is the inner constituents will recombine. And then, of course, we do that to the inner ones. We have to do that for the outer ones. And then the outer constituents will recombine. So that's how you can figure out what the products are going to be, because you can see if we have B now is going to be formed with Y, bonded to Y. You see we have B, which is our metal, we write that first, and then we have BY. And then the outer two will recombine, and then we'll have A, which is our metal, with X, and we have AX over here. Okay? So that is basically what happens in a double replacement reaction. And like I said, you can identify them because you have two compounds on the left side and two compounds on the right side. Okay, now let's go through and look at a couple and see if we can figure out what the products are going to be and also balance these chemical equations. So here we have our first one. We have silver nitrate. We have a compound and we have another compound, potassium chromate. Sometimes I think we have actually have four things. We have silver nitrate. That's one and two. Uh, potassium is three and our chromate is four and they're going to recombine and we're going to recombine the inner two. And in order to do this, we have to figure out what the charges are so that we know what the correct ratio will be in our products. Potassium is plus one, nitrate is minus one, so we know that we're going to have one to one potassium and nitrate to form, obviously, our potassium nitrate. KNO3, that is supposed to be a three. All right, and plus, we're going to have silver chromate. Well, silver forms a plus one charge, chromate forms a minus two charge, so that tells us that this is going to be Ag2, CrO4, okay? So silver nitrate plus potassium chromate will form potassium nitrate and silver chromate. And let's see if we can balance that. We have two potassiums over here, which tells us we're going to have to have two potassiums over here. And that tells us we're going to have two nitrates. So we have to put two here in front of the silver. And let's say we have two silvers and two silvers and one chromate and one chromate. Okay, so that is the double replacement reaction for potassium chromate. Now, before we go on to the next one, I am going to show you this double replacement reaction. So let's go do that right now. Okay, so now I'm going to perform the double displacement reaction between silver nitrate and potassium chromate. And here you can see I have my solution. I have an aqueous solution of pot uh, potassium chromate, and I'm going to add to that from my pipette. I'm going to add some silver nitrate. I'm just going to drop a few drops in here, and you can see that very nicely it forms a very pretty brown-red precipitate. And that is the result of the double replacement reaction between those two compounds. It's actually solid. It doesn't really look like a solid, but if I pass it through a filter, I can filter it out. And that is the reaction between potassium chromate and silver nitrate. OK, that worked out really well. We formed that reddish brown solid. Oftentimes, it forms a precipitate. And let's see if we can figure out what that reddish brown solid is. And in order to do that, we're going to have to now turn to our solubility table. So let's get our solubility table out and look and see if we can figure out on our solubility table what that reddish brown solid is. OK, so here you can see we have our solubility table. We have our positive ions on the top and our negative ions and our polyatomic ions on the left-hand side. And we want to see which of those two, the potassium nitrate or the silver chromate of our products, is that insoluble solid. So let's just look at the first one, which we have potassium is here. And we have nitrate is over here. And you can see if we follow nitrate over and potassium down, we come to this square right here, and it says SOL, and that means that that is soluble. So that is not the solid that we, we, that we produced. And let's see, the next one was silver and chromate. So here is chromate, and over here is silver. And you can see if we follow the silver and the chromate, that they intersect right here. And that says insoluble, 
And that tells us that yes, indeed, that solid, that precipitate, that red brown precipitate that we formed is actually silver chromate. All right, so um, let's go back and do another one. Okay, that's right, that was silver chromate. That was our insoluble compound, the potassium nitrate being soluble. Okay, now let's go through and let's do the next one. This one we have potassium iodide, and then we have, uh, yeah, potassium iodide and lead nitrate. And in this case, we know, let's do the inner two first. We know that potassium forms, excuse me, the iodide forms a minus one, lead is plus two. So we know that in this equation, one of our reactants, or one of our products, excuse me, is going to be PBI2. And then the other product is the potassium, which is plus one, the nitrate, which is minus one. And once again, in this one, we're going to have KNO3. And let's balance that. We have two iodines, so we're going to have to put a two here, two potassiums. We're going to have to put a two there. And I think that's balanced because it gives two potassiums, two nitrates, two potassiums, two iodines, two nitrates, and one lead. Okay, so that's balanced like that. And once again, I'm going to show you this double replacement reaction. So let's go and do that reaction right now. Okay, now we're going to do the double displacement reaction between lead nitrate and potassium iodide. And you can see in my beaker here, I have my solution of lead nitrate. And then from my pipette, I'm going to add some potassium iodide. I'm just going to put a few drops in here at a time, and we'll see what we get out of that reaction. You can see we get that very beautiful canary yellow color. That's a solid. That's a precipitate. It might not look like a solid, but it's in solution. And if we wanted to, we could pass that through a filter, and then we could get from that the solid onto the filter. So that is the solid that is the result of the reaction between potassium iodide and lead nitrate. Okay, that's a very beautiful reaction. I like that. This, the double replacement reactions don't tend to be very flashy, but they are very beautiful, and you have that solid formed. That's that yellow solid, and let's see if we can figure out, using our solubility table, what that yellow solid is. Okay, so here is our solubility table again. And we know from the previous reaction we formed, in this reaction also, we formed potassium nitrate. And we know from the previous reaction that that is soluble. So that yellow stuff is not potassium nitrate because that is a soluble compound. Now let's look at the other, uh, with the other compound that we formed. The other product was lead iodide. So there's the iodide. And here is the lead. And so we fold the lead over and the iodide down. We see that... Uh, here it is. We see that that is insoluble. So that yellow solid, that precipitate that we formed in that case was PBI2, which is lead iodide. All right. Very good. Let's go back and do another reaction. Okay. So that's right. That yellow solid is lead iodide, that nice yellow canary yellow solid. Okay. Let's go and do the next one. This time we have sodium cyanide and sulfuric acid. We have one, two, three, four different things. We're going to recombine them. Let's do the sodium and the sulfate first. Sodium forms a plus one charge. Sulfur is minus one. So we know, oops, that's not true. Sulfur is, sulfate is minus two. So we know that one of our products is going to be Na. We need two sodiums to satisfy one minus two sulfate. And then that the other product is going to be uh, hydrogen cyanide. And hydrogen is obviously plus one, and cyanide, if you don't know, is minus one, so that is going to be hydrogen cyanide. And let's see what we need to balance. We have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two cyanides. We need a two over here, and that satisfies our two sodiums and our one sulfate, and that chemical equation is balanced just like that. Okay, one more. Uh, oh, and this is a gas. Hydrogen cyanide is a gas, so we have a gas being formed in this one. So now we have calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, so we have one, two, three, four ions here, and calcium is plus two, chlorine is minus one, so when we have our potassium chloride, when we, excuse me, our calcium chloride, we recombine our outer elements, it's CaCl2, and then the other one is going to be the hydroxide and the hydrogen. And sometimes you see it written as HOH, but uh, that's just a plus sign here. HOH, and we can just write that because we have two hydrogens and an oxygen. And that, of course, is H2O. 
oh, which is water. So that reaction produces water. Okay, now let's see, we need a balance. We have two chlorines, and that tells us we're going to have to put a two here, which gives us two hydrogens. We have two hydrogens, and let's see, we actually have on this side, we have two here and two here. That's four, so we're going to need two more here for two hydrogens, and that gives us two oxygens. We have two oxygens, one calcium, one calcium. Okay, so there you go. That chemical equation is balanced, and we want to just maybe put down minus one and plus one since we're trying to be complete here. All right, so that, uh, that takes care of all of that. We have our double replacement reactions. We have two compounds, four ions on the left, and two compounds and four ions on the right. And that is how you can identify a double replacement reaction. Okay, so thank you very much. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. And we will see you next time.